as much as this may be overkill I just do not want this situation happening again when I was at the track having such a blast of a time and the car breaks down lose all fuel pressure here we are now one day after the Friday night drift practice that I went to where the car stopped working uh, so I've got the fuel pump wiring this is just the connector for the fuel level sender these two wires go to the fuel pump uh, the striped yellow one is the one that's the 12 volt supply from the fuse circuit from the ecu when you turn the ignition on the ecu sends a signal to switch on the fuel pump and then also when cranking and then on obviously when driving at the track what i had to do was cut this connector and just married up as best I could with what I had at the time this connector with wiring here and just hardwired it to the battery with a fuse there and yeah negative and positive straight power supply to the fuel pump this is the fuel top hat fuel pump hat for the fuel tank you yeah, have just disconnected the lines but pretty, pretty easy to do it's not too difficult I cleaned these lines before going to disconnect them pretty much you just pinched these two this, this retainer clip here, you pretty much just pinch that together and push the connector and then sort of push it in and then push it out. Combination of thereof, work on it, you'll be able to disconnect them. I'm now just about to remove the top hat and the whole fuel pump and level sender unit. I've just laid a towel down because it's going to get messy with fuel. As soon as I pull this out, it's going to leak fuel everywhere. Just had some paper towel just soaking up from when I cleaned all around here if you don't want to get dirt in the fuel tank and this believe it or not it was already quite loose look how loose that was now personally I wouldn't do it up and leave it that loose myself so just unscrew it smell that fuel already and just remember which line goes where and you see there the hose the actual rubber hose has actually started to come off from me just pulling on it so I really don't like that I'm gonna have to put some clamps around there around these connections because yeah I don't like that at all there we go Whenever you're working with your fuel system, always disconnect the battery. Make sure there's no potential sources for spark. Because, yes, very dangerous. I might just push these lines to the side for now. If I can tuck them under, under there somewhere. Get your fuel hat assembly seal. Rubber seal there, try not to drop it into the tank pull it out altogether eventually anyway I'm gonna put this camera down I really wanted to show you guys me removing the fuel pump just so that you get an idea of what it's like actually pulling this out whether you've done the job before yourself I thought it'd be really cool showing you here we go guys I've removed the top ring and the seal I've pulled the seal off and look at all of this this is just sitting in here um, so I think we've got a bit of a problem potentially with the actual fitment because this is how exactly how I'm removing it was how it was fitted so that's a nice Walbro believed to be a 460 but we'll check that out um, the whole thing's loose even the zip ties loose the pumps come loose off the uh, I can tell already look at that look at that so Dodgy brothers. So fuel pumps come loose. Look, I'm going to put the camera down. I'm going to have a good look at this to find out what's going on exactly. But uh, the fitment is poor inside. It's all come loose. What a sloppy mess. This is why, if you're not sure, 100% sure, yes, you can do it yourself. But to what quality? This stopped me from having a really great time. I was out there for an hour and a half having a blast. But this dodgy fuel pump install got the better of me. So first time I've pulled this pump out, 
Don't worry guys, we'll, we'll fix this nicely. So yeah, this is not how you install a fuel pump. Yes, we, we have a problem here. This is not supposed to be like this. But look at that. Oh gosh. Dodgy. This means no good. You want to see what's happened. So this was the cause for me being out at track and having to stop basically because the fuel pump fuse kept on blowing. This is why it's so important guys just to use the right materials when you go to do a job and do it the best you can. If you don't know what you're doing, ask someone who's got some idea who can give you some experience. Anyway, so it turns out, let's just have a look. Let's see. I pulled the pump out. Have a look at this. Look, 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 look at this. Look at this. So these zippies, Look, I don't want to pay out on the person too much, you know, who did this. I'm used to high standards of work and even just cutting those zip ties like they are. I just look at that and go, oh man, that's dodgy. That's come loose. So the fuel pump is actually come loose. The fuel pump wasn't even clicked in. I think there, I don't know for sure because I've only just seen this, but I think there's some mounting tabs. Somehow that clicks in. This is what we're looking at. So, first of all, the pump has come off the bracket, or it wasn't even installed properly on the bracket by the looks of it. That's, to me, what it looks like. That's all bent. One of the clamps has slipped off a bit. We've got way too much wiring here than what's actually needed. And the main cause was this heat shrink coming off, slipping off, and these two wires were touching together. That's enough to short any fused circuit. Let's start on uh, getting this back to how it should be. There we go, TI Automotive, made in the USA. So this is a wall bow. I took a break for a while and I decided not to go the way I was going in terms of rewiring the fuel pump. I have the fuel pump top hat here and now what I've decided to do is go with actually hard wiring through the actual hat itself. So I've drilled two holes out and I've got these little doodads here and some of you may have seen these already you carefully drill the right size hole for these little little bad boys here and what happens is you get two of them they come with a little o-ring and you put one on one side and one on the other side like that so you notice i've just drilled two holes really clean holes going straight through the fuel top hat and once you get one on on both sides you put the bolt through and that will hold these terminals these uh, crimp terminals that i've got here which i'll crimp and hard line hard wire the uh the fuel pump straight through the hat through the electrical connection there so once i'm done once i've got the wire crimped onto this terminal basically it'll look like something like this i'll probably put the allen key face facing down but yeah you get the idea i'll show you what it looks like once it's all fitted but pretty easy to do guys you just have to be careful you have to be really careful when you go drilling through this top hat because you really only get one go at it and um i've had to use my little dremel tool here just with the sanding wheel to just take down the side of that plastic bit sticking out yeah so that these fittings would fit nicely to make these fit exactly i've actually had to grab one of them actually both sides and just take a little bit off it's actually really hard material so it's been quite quite an effort to do this there you go that's like one i've still got to obviously wire it uh, and crimp it to that terminal but that's what it'll look like and i'll just do the same to the other side and then once it's fitted it's just a matter of hooking up the ring terminals with the wire from the relay there we go just like that so the electrical bulkhead connections are now fitted to the fuel pump top hat and the ring terminals with the new wire will just go on top one negative one positive connected to the relay using the factory fuel pump signal wire as the trigger for the new fuel pump wiring setup. So we shouldn't have any dramas with it burning out now. Uh, these top hats have been known to burn out actually through the connector. The reason for doing this guys is it's going to take out the weakest link. So the, the wiring, my rewiring would be fine, it would be great. I'm using 14 gauge wire 
uh, but now the weakest link will be that actual factory connector not too sure how much those pins are rated for so there's been a few guys out there who have burnt through the actual connector after going through what i've had to go through which hasn't been too bad i want to just basically future proof it so that there'll be no more issues with this i've just made the crimp connection uh, of the hot wire for the fuel pump or well, the positive anyway and uh yeah i've got some heat shrink as well which i'm gonna slide over the top as some extra protection that should now be better a lot better than the previous setup when i pulled it out the heat shrink had slid off and now we've got a crimp connection with double shielding hopefully it doesn't happen again so i've gone to the extra effort of putting even two clamps to secure the pump with some e85 uh, compatible fuel hose and i've like used crimp connectors with heat shrink on the inside part of the actual crimper as well i've looked up the material and it seems to be safe the double walled heat shrink apparently is not good but i thought look i'm just going to put another layer on anyway so there's two layers there and then i've even got some fuel hose that i've cut and i'm just going to slide that over for both individual wires and then i'm going to secure it with some metal wire to the actual hanger and there is no way that at that point that's going to rub through it's going to be totally isolated from one another unless it rubs through somewhere else along but um, this is the good wire i've used I, I haven't used any pvc wire just a heads up though guys if you are doing fuel tank in tank fuel tank uh, rewiring you should really go for the um the proper compatible heat shrink that heat shrink actually isn't the black stuff but i've, I've just decided to use it anyway because i want some extra layer i don't know it'll probably probably break down a little um, but yeah, look, we'll see how it goes. I'm happy. It's going to have like triple layers of protection, so it should be fine. And um, yeah, so the brown stuff is the stock standard uh, wiring. And what I've done, I've doubled it, doubled it up, and then I've used this yellow wire here. So apparently this yellow wire is u butte and just had some laying around. It's not PVC. It's super duper good stuff. And then uh, the eyelet crimp terminals there and there. They'll just bolt underneath the top hat. And there we go. That'll be good. That'll be it. There we go, guys. A bit of overkill for you. And there we go. Fuel pump is ready to be mounted to the top hat now. It's a little bit of overkill, guys. But I just did not want this happening again. Now we're ready to go back in. So finally, after taking my sweet, sweet time, we are good to go. So we shouldn't have any connector burning out issues. And we've now got 14 gauge wiring to the pump. Fuel pump's nice and secure. Two clamps, overkill, that's what you want. In case, for some reason, the heat shrink, I've got like two different lots of heat shrink. Heat shrink on the actual crimp, which I believe that material on the actual crimp uh, terminal joiner is okay for fuel, but the other is not anyway i've decided to put triple layers on i've got the uh fuel hose here so the wires run through two separate fuel hoses so there's no way unless it rubs on the metal and rubs through there's no way it's gonna short so i'm really happy with that next is to whack it back in so close to putting the new well not the new fuel pump in but the uh fuel pump back in rather this is the power and 12 volt ground and I've hooked it up to a relay going straight from the battery. Relay is there. I've wrapped most of it. I've still got a little bit to go. I've got to wrap this wire. This is for the fuel sender. So I'm going to wrap that now nicely. And then we are just about ready to put it back in. Fuel pump is back in. Now all I need to do is connect up the new wires. New wires that we've made. Should be the other way around and connect up the lines and then basically i'll secure the relay fix up the wiring just neaten it a little bit connect the battery and we're good to go i've got the fuel lines connected up now now i've got the wiring here it's all ready to go i've just got to fit the fuel pump cover here route the wiring through connect it in wires are connected up positive and negative i've got the connector for the fuel sender plugged in and the wires all wrapped nicely and all that has to go now is just that just this cabin cover has to be refitted cabin cover is now on 
Here we have it guys, the wiring job is complete and it's all been tested, working okay. I've since gone and drifted uh, a couple of times since now with this setup and it's working like a charm. Just to show you it's all working okay, pop the key in, listen to that fuel pump prime and the relay click. Hear that? Works like a charm. Guys, I really hoped this video helped you with your fuel pump install, whether you have to redo it or make the mod that I've made with the S15 top hat, fuel pump top hat. Guys, please like the video if you got some value out of it and uh, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Peace out.